And then we also have to do a quick one over of the data, right? So the first thing, look at over 90 days. Maybe look at over 60 days and 90 days. If those numbers have a lot of dollars in it, we need to go see what's going on, right? Don't, this is the time when we do month and close, this is the time to go into what we call here at four lane inquisition mode, you need to ask. Like you need to say, this looks weird, I need to look at it. Okay, so looking at those that are way outstanding. The other thing that you wanna review quickly is just for any accounts that have a zero. Now this one has a zero because it's a header and a job probably. So like it's saying Shara has a zero, but Barrett, Barnett Design, which is under Shara, has an amount. But if I look up here at Amy's Bird Sanctuary, it has a zero dollar amount and it's not coming from one of our sub projects. So I would be wanting to dive into that and see what is happening. So we have a credit memo and an invoice. They're not applied to each other. And I would need to go in and apply them to each other to get it fixed, right? And the reason why for that is because when I look at this or when, when you know, leadership looks at the uh, summary report, let's say when they're looking through the month and close work papers and they go, why is Amy's birth sanctuary? Because they won't even look at the amount. The first thing they'll do is go down the left column They'll be like, why, Amy, why is Amy's Bird Sanctuary on here? We shouldn't be doing any work with them. Why are they on our receivables report? I thought they paid. Okay, continue to dip, go down the balance sheet. Um, so inventory has an inventory subledger report, right? Inventory valuation summary. Undeposited funds should never really have a balance in it per se at month end. I mean, it can have a balance in it, but it's infrequent that it should have a balance in there. So it's good to go in and look at um, what is not deposited. So go into banking, make deposits, and see what's sitting in there as outstanding. And if nothing shows up, then we have to go figure it out, right? We can't just leave a balance sitting in there if we don't know what it is. So one of the things too, when you're reviewing your balance sheet is to look through fixed assets. People hide, things hide in fixed assets. Every month we should go into fixed assets and we should d dig in and look at what happened during that month, right? So you can change the date. What happened during that month and should it be there? Okay, so they have a fixed asset threshold of what can be expensed and what, what needs to be amortized. $150 table should not be expensed, I don't think, in any business. And so I would click into this and move it over to the P&L during my review. Okay, they have a computer that was $5,000, definitely probably should be, I mean, definitely should be um, amortized. A couch, $1,300, it depends on their fixed asset threshold, but lamps, they got five and it was a total of a thousand dollars. That is something that we'd have to make sure that we have an understanding, but I mean, $200 each of a lamp probably can be expensive. So we wanna review those accounts. And then, so we're gonna continue on down, run our AP subledger report, look at the MasterCard reconciliation and look at what is unreconciled, right? Look at the unclear transactions. 